Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, September 9th of 2018. <clears throat> I'm feeling a little bit better. I guess a lot better than I did a month or so ago. My taste buds are still messed up, and it really makes it one of the few pleasures I have in life is eating and and they're still messed up from the antibiotic that I was massive. I was taking a very powerful uh, antibiotic for a leg infection. And uh, man, it just did absolutely created havoc on me. And <clears throat> it's been over, uh, over a month ago. Well, see, July, yeah. I think I was in the hospital, I believe, on July 4th. I was. Um, so I have still not recovered and got my, some items taste okay, some taste great, most items are crappy, so yeah, it's a, not a problem I thought I would ever have with my taste buds, you know, you think you're going to have other problems, prostate problems or hemorrhoids or heart trouble or something. I just don't think you think you're going to have problems with your taste buds. I worked with a U.S. Army veteran that was, let's see, highly decorated. He was bayoneted, I believe, in Korea, and then he was shot in the face in Vietnam, and he lost his uh, sense of taste. He couldn't taste anything because he lost his sense of smell. Uh, so, but I wasn't shot in the face. Uh, this is going to be uh, a little bit of rambling, and I may get into a little storytelling. As I've told you before, and as you probably know by now, I, <laughs> I don't make an outline. I don't make a list. I just, well, something will, like, trigger... Uh, Dallas officer arrested for shooting a man in his home. Sometimes stories like that that get me ah, uh, and then I may want to mention it or talk about it or something. And then by the time I I get here, I let me take this banner off, lower third here. Uh, yes, somebody asked. Uh, I have rearranged things. In fact, I rearranged things. <laughs> Somebody asked a few days ago, did you arrange things? And then I rearranged it after after that even. I have my 4K monitor here, and I have it in 4K mode finally. So I have my uh, 4K monitor here, and I went back to my older, now both of these are LG monitors. And this is my, I remember I bought a 34-inch LG wide monitor. This is not it. I <coughs> gave that to my son in the other room to use. I went back to the ultra-wide LG monitor that I had before, which I forget what the size on it is. Um, did I go there? No, I did not. Um, and the reason I, I'm trying this configuration now is before because they're not they weren't both LG monitors when I would go from something on this monitor here and drag it over to this monitor it would resize and it would resize in a not a good way <clears throat> but now with the both being LG monitors and both running this utility See if it's going to show up on which monitor. I'm not sure if I can drag it over or see. Well, it's working slow because of because I'm doing a screen capture. Bummer. I think I probably clicked on it too many times to. Uh, but the. Uh, <coughs> 
utility for LG makes it where it works okay. So I can have something here on the 4K and drag it over the big, you know, be big, drag it over and it resizes properly. Or I can drag something from this screen over here and it resizes where before when I was using the 34 inch, which was, well, I think that was a note. I can't remember. <clears throat> but anyway, now that seems to be working. So that seems to be taking care of the uh, right now. But then who knows tomorrow, the next day. Also, some reason the reason that uh, some of you think I rearranged everything is I did mute, move the camera. And it was over here. And I'll probably move the camera again because I've been moving the camera for the cameras for years and years. That's one of the things I've always moved around and rearranged. So the Logitech Brio is now up there and it was over there. <clears throat> In the past years before there was a YouTube or a Google or an Amazon or when I was streaming video from my own computer because there wasn't any place you could send a video. Oh, I forgot I changed uh, Echo to the word computer. So now that act is sort of probably activating. I gotta. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, I got the. And then, too, I'm looking at. Well, I was looking at today a, you know, different. Instead of a USB webcam, a different camera for up there. Although I've got. I have three Panasonic cameras, and the G7 will work through USB and whatever, but I was looking at uh, different cameras. Then, of course, I thought I should just play again with the G7, hooking it up. So uh, there'll be some probably moving around of the cameras. Uh, well, back to this news item. Where are you? CNN, yeah. I'm in the Dow I'm in the Fort Worth area. I live in the Fort Worth area. And this happened in the uh, a Dallas female officer gets off work, goes home to her apartment building, <sighs> goes into the wrong apartment. Apparently, the apartments all you know that their doors exterior, uh, except for I guess apartment numbers on them and whatever. And she goes into the wrong apartment. Uh, and shoots and kills the man who's in the apartment. Anyway, it's she's been arrested for charge with manslaughter. And she posted $300,000 bond right away. And she is, I guess, back at her apartment complex. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, strange story, and more will come out about it, but strange story. There's always a, a lot of stuff like that. Something that's just, you hear it and you say, what's wrong with this? And then you find out later uh, more details. But in the beginning, you, in the beginning, I almost wish in a way that they didn't report some things because they they just don't have the information, but still it gets reported. But I'm probably wrong with that. <clears throat> I understand that in the UK, or would it be in England? I'm not sure about the geographical, you know, how the... Uh, law enforcement and the but in England let me say you don't have stories like this because they're not it's you don't report them things don't get reported well I mean something like this would get but you know what I mean 
you don't get the detail or whatever. It's like something happened and okay. And then you find out when it goes to court or even then I think you find out, you know, like when it's the, when this case is decided, we're over here, everything is, and you have people, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I listened to the British Broadcasting Corporation since 1955, uh, almost daily. There was gaps in there. But, uh, yeah, I'm not an expert on their law. And one thing I've also heard, which uh, our law profession, I'm not sure it should be called a profession, over here is just... And I've heard that over there, a lawyer, and I, and I guess there's a difference between, there are, I'm not sure if they call them lawyers, and then there's barristers. And then barristers, I believe, are the ones who actually go into court and uh, do that part in the court. But anyway, uh, their legal professionals over there are not allowed to do they would be, not only would be they be disbarred for what lawyers do here, they would go to prison over there for what the lawyers do here. Uh, so, and if you're outside the U United States and you watch movies, you've probably seen, especially I guess if you were in the UK and you'd watch, well, of course you probably watch so many U.S. TV shows and so many U.S. movies that you would not be shocked by it. But I think if you didn't, you would be sitting there thinking, oh, a lawyer or a barrister could not do what they do. You know, over here, if I, well, I'll say like I'm Donald Trump, if I went out on 12th and Broadway or whatever, and I shot somebody. He 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 said, uh, eh, people love me so much they wouldn't even do anything. I could get by with doing it. Uh, here, if if something happened, and I I'm arrested and I get a lawyer, uh, if I could afford a lawyer, well, of course for something serious. They're supposed to supply you with a lawyer if you're indigent, if you don't have any money. But anyway, and of course, if you get one of those lawyers who has a ton of cases and is paid very little money by the state, you're not, you're not going to get a good lawyer. Oh, I mean, they may be good lawyers. They just they just have so many cases. If you could afford a lawyer here. I've never been arrested for, I've been arrested, nothing for serious. Um, never, I had a lawyer one time. Uh, but um, if you go to a lawyer, you know, I do something, I shoot somebody, and I go to the lawyer. Now, the lawyers, I'm sure, are going to say this wouldn't happen, but it would, you, I go to the lawyer and I say, well, I didn't like this guy's, he had a, a tattoo. I didn't like it, so I shoot him. The lawyer is going to say, uh, Mr. Howard, uh, have you ever, you were probably traumatized by someone who had a, what did I say, a goatee or a tattoo. They're going to give, they're going to, they're going to say, you were traumatized. In your past, do you remember somebody who had a tattoo? Uh, well, my my father didn't, but uh, yeah, my father had a tattoo, and he was cruel to you, wasn't he? He beat you. You were you know, they're going to give you the case that you know that they. And in the UK, and I think <laughs> that would not be allowed. And here, it's unbelievable what attorneys get away with uh, with doing. Anyway, why did I go into that? Uh, anyway, I live in the Fort Worth area. I and I shouldn't make this judgment because of the small amount of data that I have, but I'm going to say it anyway. Why not? Who cares? 
I have not been impressed with the few Dallas police officers that I had contact with. Not impressed with them at all. Zero. So I don't know what's going on over there. I live in Fort Worth. I have met and worked a little bit, tried to help out the, uh, I talked about that I think a little bit in the past, the Fort Worth Police Department for a little bit. I was massively impressed with the Fort Worth police officers, their professionalism, their college, their uh, police academy, every, their, everything about them. Uh, I was born and raised in the Kansas City, Missouri area, and I had a lot of contact for 30 years with the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. And I was impressed with them, with the officers, although there were some cycles, there were some things of uh, contact where I was not so impressed. In the very beginning, I was really impressed with them. and. Uh, and then later on, but there were some problems in there. Um, and I think they may have changed their procedure. Then I re remember later on some contact with, uh, now part of it would be, and with civilians or whatever, your contact with the police department might be calling 911, although in the beginning we didn't have 911 service. So that would be your, your dealing with the 911 call taker or the 911 dispatcher. And so that might, you know, you might judge the police department. And that might be a, with the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. I know um, one time I called working at a hospital in worst part of Kansas City, working security at a hospital. And right across the street from the hospital, was a tavern and there was problems it was a black tavern uh, and because we were in a black area and it was the worst part of Kansas City and stuff was happening all the time shootings and everything. But anyway I'm working and I'm at that we switched every two hours and I was working the parking garage area patrolling that and uh, the tavern was right across the street and it's closing time I think like 2 a.m. in the morning or whatever closing time was for the tavern and uh, a guy comes out of the tavern closing up goes to the trunk of his car and uh, takes out a shotgun or a rifle or something out of the trunk and just starts shooting it in the air. And so I'm, I had, I got out of the uh, Cushman scooter that I was patrolling in and uh, there was a phone on the wall. Uh, I think that was before cell phones, I believe. What would have been, I guess. So uh, I took the phone and I called uh, the police dispatcher. And I think that was before 911. And I said, you know, a secure, I'm a security officer at Research Medical Center right across the street at such and such a tavern. Uh, a guy is just standing outside of his car shooting a rifle up into the air. And I think this was before 911. She says, uh, do you want him arrested? And I said, well, I'm security over at the hospital. This is across the street, not on hospital property. Uh, could you just have an officer or two come by? He sh and then he was shooting actually, <laughs> bang, bang, while I'm on the phone. And uh, she says, well, if you don't want him arrested, uh, then we won't be sending an officer. I said, okay, hung up. Uh, then at the same hospital, another time, um, Two or three o'clock in the morning again, a lady comes into the emergency room, confused, disoriented. She was walking, and uh, she said, "I uh, I drove my car up into somebody's yard. It's in somebody's yard." And I said, "Well, where's your car now?" "I don't know where my car, you know, car is." 
And I said, the car's in somebody's yard. Yeah, it's in their yard. So anyway, uh, and I said, have a seat. You know, are you okay? Have a seat and, you know, this type of stuff. And then I got some information from her. And then I called the, uh, and I think there was 911 then, I believe. Anyway, I called the police dispatcher and I said, there's a uh, lady here at the hospital. Uh, she re drove into somebody's yard someplace around here and she doesn't know where her car is. Uh, and the dispatcher says, oh, do you want her arrested? And I said, no, she just needs to know where her car is. Well, if you don't want her arrested, we're not going to send any. I said, well, somebody around here has a car parked in their yard and they're probably going to be calling you saying there's a, somebody's car is parked in my yard. Well, if you don't want her arrested, we're not sending anybody. I said, fine. So then about uh, 30 minutes later, three or four police cars come screaming into our parking lot and officers jump out with nightsticks and I think one might have a shotgun and come in. Oh, is there somebody? We, was there, is there somebody that has a car parked? Well, we've had, we've been we've been looking over here. There's a car parked in somebody's yard, and we've been searching everywhere to see. And I said, "This is a lady," you know. That type of uh, that type of stuff. Two, what I got uh, upset with the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department is, and I have not. I don't know anything about their. Uh, manpower situation but they you know said that they did not have enough police they just have enough police officers the city would not you know pay for more police officers they just didn't have enough and the night yeah they did have 911 because the 911 uh calls were lining up the officers would be busy doing something and they couldn't take the calls and they had calls waiting and they'd have to do on the radio is there anybody that can clear from service is there somebody in another zone, you know, who can respond on this uh, alarm? Or So we would hear that stuff on their radio all the time. So the Kansas City, Missouri police officers uh, were saying, and like we would be hearing it, if we were hospital security or if you were some type of security, you know, you'd have contact with them. And the police were saying, well, I'm just... Uh, I'm just going to take my time and uh, let the calls back up. Let them back up, and then they'll have to hire more, get us more officers and that type of stuff. And I was thinking, and I blogged about it, in, you know, on my little blog back then. I blogged since 1982 about stuff. But, you know, I said, uh, you know, if I were the, I can understand, you know, manpower, needing more manpower and all that type of stuff. But if I were the chief of police, uh, I would just, uh, I'd call in all the captains and majors and colonels or whatever, and, I'd, you know, okay, all you colonels and captains, uh, I'm the chief of police, and for two hours every day, I'll take a patrol car out. I may have a, I'll take my clipboard with me, and I may be doing some chief of police stuff, but I'll be in a car out there taking calls if I can. All you captains and uh, colonels and whatever, uh, get your, take a car out and answer calls for half the day. Do your other crap, the re you know, the rest of the other day. You know, all you, you know, just all the, the ranks or whatever and people doing shit at headquarters, you know, whatever. Take a car out for six hours out of a, sh you know, I would have do done that, that type of stuff. Uh, so I was kind of pissed. At, I, th I thought that was really, you know, saying they weren't going to take calls or deliberately letting calls back up or they weren't going to rush because they wanted more. That did not impress me. In the Kansas City area, the uh, Grandview Police Department, well, in the Kansas City area, the Kansas City, Kansas Police Department, they were horrendous. They were terrible. I tried not to go into Kansas City, Kansas. I'm not talking about Kansas City, Missouri now. I'm talking about across the state. I tried not to go into Kansas City, Kansas. The police were so, I mean, the, the things that I heard that happened and things that made the newspaper, they were just terrible. You know, and I have a feeling they haven't improved one bit. And then there's 
in can in Missouri area, right next to Kansas City. Kansas City sandwiches it in, and Kansas the uh, Grandview Police Department was horrible. And I'm not sure they've improved. Maybe they have, but back a long time ago, uh, I had their channel in my radio, and so I could hear their police calls. And the racist, there weren't very many blacks. In the Kansas City area, the blacks sort of moved, were always moving south, moving south, moving south. There weren't a lot in South Kansas City and at that time. They were moving that, you know, purchasing homes and moving and moving. And there weren't very many, if any, in Grand, the city of Grandview, which is south of Kansas City. And I heard racist shit on the Grandview Police Department frequency, which was not scrambled. <laughs> All you needed to go buy a scanner at Radio Shack, and at that point, I think maybe they were not sure if they were programmable then or if you had to buy a crystal, but they would have a crystal for uh, the various police departments. Just say, I want a crystal for South Zone Kansas City and South Attack Kansas City, and uh, let me have one for the Grandview Police Department or Raytown or whatever you wanted. They were not scrambled, and situation has changed now a lot but I heard every night that, you know can't remember can't remember it would be like I'm not sure what I heard you know I can't remember now but it was you know hey there's one I'm not sure what they said you know there's one going down South 71 Highway now yeah he's driving such and such a car okay I'll get that guy's ass or whatever and, you know, okay, the car stop, uh, blackmail, you know, blah, blah, blah. It was a plan. And then there was some other stuff that went on, unbelievable. And I, I doubt that that department has actually changed, although probably half or three-fourths of their city is probably black now. And, uh, but then... Uh, there were other police departments. Uh, Missouri, well, I'm not sure I want to get into that. And I'm not, I was going to get into like, nah, I won't get into that. Um, there was some I think I do want to mention that. There was some bad feeling between the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department and the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department and the EMS service. And this is uh, back, I think, in the 70s, maybe early 80s. There was, And I'm not sure what the situation is later on. It's been a problem. But the police department was better paid, apparently, than the fire department EMS. And the fire department was upset. And we'll just include the EMS service. They were upset. And they tried to get parity or something. So um, I was working at Trinity Lutheran Hospital then. So that would have been 1975. Oh, 76 in that area. The uh, Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department went on strike. Yes. They went on strike. And so I was working at a hospital. <laughs> we went on to 12-hour shifts and we had to be extra. Uh, we had somebody actually set off a, uh, you know, which is against the law, set off a, you know, pull a thing to get the fire department to respond. The fire department, of course, didn't respond. Uh, a few police cars did, which were, you know, they had a fire extinguisher in their trunk or whatever, which would have been pretty much uh, useless to us. Um, although we were also trained and employees had all been, had minimal training in how to, not just for this, but, you know, that's part of your training, very important. But uh, 
I was going to the, that's right, I was going to the police academy at that time in addition to working, you know, full time uh, and being a reserve officer with a small police department. I was at that time going to the police academy and uh, anyway, I was going to get into, I'll get back into, remind me to get back to the bad feeling. Oh, anyway, the fire department was very upset. Now what happened is fire Kansas City, Missouri fire department not would not respond. Uh, other police, other fire departments were asked to come in with their, you know, of course, smaller, you know, could they bring in some of their engines to fill in at some of the other st stations, Kansas City, do stuff like that, but still not enough fire protection and not the trained, you know, hook and ladders and all the stuff that you need. Uh, but the firefighters were enraged at the police department because not only did the police department police officers not support their strike but the police officers were and of course you would expect you know expect them to respond as best they could to situation so there was bad feelings there but anyway i was that i just remembered that that's i was going to the police academy so and we had an extra large class well, when I started at the police academy, it was located in, was it Independence? It was located at what was a, had been a, a nunnery, a, a convent, not just a convent, but a whole with roads, different buildings. And for the first part of the uh, police department academy, it was there. It was inconvenient for me to work my regular day shift and then have to drive out there a long way at night and then go, you know, attend the academy there. But um, it was a nice facility, especially for doing the situational training. And we could even use cars and st not be on city streets for doing our car stops and stuff like that in the training. But halfway through, they switched it to the police academy to uh, Penn Valley Community College and made it, uh, we were the first class that got college credit for the police academy. And it was, I could see from the hospital I worked at, I could look over and see Penn Valley Community College. And so it was easy. I could just stay at the hospital after my day shift and have lunch or whatever and then go right over to, you know, uh, to Penn Valley Community College. So that was convenient. But, let's see, okay, so it would have been before we moved. So we would have been at the convent or whatever. So the strike happened, and then I had to, we had to go to, so we showed up, and no police instructors showed up for the police academy that night because they were all pulling extra duty because of the strike. So... There was a bunch of us there, and then we were just, uh, well, should be. And of course, I was saying, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I think after X amount of time, if the, if the teacher doesn't show up, we should just go home. And then other people were saying, you know, whatever. So finally, somebody called the dispatcher and said, hey, you know, we're out here at the police academy and no instructor. So they sent out the physical uh, training instructor, Lindell. Oh, God. And so he came out. He did the martial arts and uh, lateral neck restraint. Not a chokehold, a lateral neck, neck restraint. He taught that type of stuff. So he showed up, and he wasn't in a good mood. And so then he was yelling at us, One of you should have taken charge. What kind of police officers are you going to be? Of course, I was already a police officer. I wasn't required. I wasn't required to. Some of the people, most of the people there were taking the training, and then if they finished the training, they would become uh, reserve police officers or full-time police officers. I was already grandfathered in. I didn't have to take it. I was, But anyway, he was yelling, somebody should have taken You should have been doing mass calisthenics. You should have been, oh, God. He was in a bad mood. But... Uh, 
eventually the strike ended and there were bad feelings between the police de you know police department and the fire department and then I wasn't it was, I don't know how long it, it was well it was a few it was a, I think a some time went by because I was yeah you know, quite a few years went by and there were still bad feelings between the police department and the fire department over that and I was at home on my nights off when I was working the midnight shift I I kept the same schedule I mean people I worked with at hospitals that if they had a chance they would put their head down you know I mean not an ICU nurse or somebody but some somebody someplace a lab tech or somebody they'd put their head down and take a little nap or do something or other uh, because they were working the midnight shift and I when I was off midnight I stayed up all night long and then I went to bed in the morning I kept the same schedule so I was always alert I never needed to take a nap sometimes I got tired but I didn't you know need to take a nap I was alert uh, but anyway so I kept so I was at home and I had the scanner going no I didn't I was at home doing house cleaning I actually I lived in a mobile home but on my nights off I started at one end and cleaned I had the TV in every room except the bathroom clean with the TV on move to the next room move to the next room no clean the bathroom but there was no TV to watch go to the next room you know with the TV or whatever but anyway I was at home and it's like 3 a.m. in the morning and the trailer act I hear a boom and of course, there's a difference between there's a sound tra traveling, you know, hear a boom, and then the trailer actually moved, you know. Uh, what in the hell is that? Turned on the scanner, and uh, I bet that video or audio is on YouTube. I should have found that for y'all. Anyway, I turned on the scanner, and somebody on the radio from a local volunteer fire department somebody keyed up and said was that exp wh where's that explosion and the dispatcher just came back and said uh, that's Kansas City Fire Department so I hit that button and then I heard the most amazing you know I was uh, heard the fire captain or whatever our uh, our truck was just, we were just blown back off the ridge or whatever. We were blown back, the windows broken out on our uh, pumper or whatever. And then they were, a pumper had already arrived with three or four firemen at a construction site. And there was ammonia nitrate uh, stored there and a massive amount. And it had exploded. Well, there was two explosions. That one, well, there had been the first one, and then when I flipped the scanner on, the second one had just happened, and my trailer rocked. And this was in, <laughs> I was in Belton, Missouri. This was in South Kansas City that this explosion took place. That would have been about uh, 125th Street, I'm guessing. The hospital that... I had worked at, which I was working at another, working at. But the one that I had worked at was at Linwood and Prospect, would have been about 63rd Street. Their windows in the hospital, the gigantic front door panels from the blast, they were blown out. Roofs were blown off of not the hospital, but of the buildings. I mean, it was a massive explosion. Anyway, heartbreaking, and, and, you know, anyway, the fire captain or whatever, and I forget what the unit number was. Let's say Pumper 83. I can't remember. I should remember the number. There's a memorial there now. Uh, the, the captain or whatever says, try to raise. Uh, we can't go over, you know, two explosions. We can't go over that ramp try to raise pumper 83 so you have the dispatch 
you know, pumper 83, pumper 83, pumper 83, please answer. Then they tone it out, which they would not normally do, you know. They hit the toning button, beep, 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 to tone out that pumper, you know. Pumper, you know, 83, respond. And it just, it just goes on like, you know, goes on like that. Uh, anyway, the, the guys that arrived were, and got there, they were just, that was it. Explosion hit. They were gone. Well, there was some feeling after that that, you know, okay, you know, this is years have gone by. Well, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department didn't help us when we had our strike. And they don't like, uh, or, you know, there was this feeling going on. So eventually, there was some rest made for the explosion. Uh, and the, that, has, that went on for years. Eventually, a, a family, I think it was, of a group uh, were charged with it. And I think some of them are still in prison. And there's a lot of uh, thought about, you know, did the police just try to find somebody, to, you know, or was justice done? So, anyway, uh, this is my new mouse that I got. And I uh, got a good deal. I actually, I bought it from Newegg. But the same price. It's wireless. Uses a little dongle uh, thing. But it seems to work really well. And I'm going into the detail. And I'm not going to review it because just do a look for a, a review on YouTube because there are people who did fantastic, excellent reviews of it, and they everybody likes it. Um, I covered that. I was going to cover something else. Anyway, I covered the monitor situation. I have moved stuff a little bit around. Um, I've decided, let's see, I can do that. Let me go here. Go to Amazon. Google. Oh, come on. I just hate this. I wish I, I needed a faster computer. Be this because of streaming or because of the recording. Uh, okay, where's the single one? Okay, no, 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 no. Well, here are the three packs. I live in an apartment, so I don't need, let's see. It's Google Wi-Fi. Here's a three pack you can get. They're all identical for 250. I don't need that. I just need one. Here it is. No, that's a two pack. Well, anyway, I'll go through. One of them is $99. And uh, I've watched again reviews on this and this is something definitely I'm going to get. I'll order it probably in a, a few weeks. Replace my Wi-Fi with it. There again, if you're interested, uh, just do a uh, I'll put a link. Just do a search. But I'll put a link to it. If you use the link, I'll get a commission. But I'm going to be purchasing uh, one. This is an apartment. I'm not sure how many square feet this is. Two bedroom, two bathroom. But it's not big. One should cover it. And knowing me, I'll probably end up purchasing another one later on. But um, it gets there again. It gets fantastic reviews uh, on YouTube. And um, if I can... I'll look, I may look some of them up, and they may, they may, I may not get the links on there right away, but I'll put the links on there. 
Uh, this has been uh, 41 minutes so far. I'm not even sure I covered what I wanted. I started telling you about police departments. And I forget why I got on that subject. By the way, I mentioned a week or two ago that I... Only thirty dollars. I am walkie-talkie. Not it's not digital. It's analog, but it's two meter and four forty. I haven't programmed it yet, except I put in the weather channel. Uh, as I've said before, I'm lazy about it. And two, I always have with these type of the situations. Two, I can program it by hand, and to, in order to do the. Uh, let's see. Where is that? There. In order to do it by, let's see, that's not it, expand, it's already moved, I should have marked it to, uh, okay, here it is, I'll mark that to uh, pin to start, okay, okay, where is it, here it is. Let me move this over, and this should I should should be showing you this is going to shrink down to the proper size. No. Well, it wants to take over this entire screen. Okay, I have to resize it. I was just telling you how, and this is this is the fault of this program. Well, the type of program it is, it does not want to move over. It wants to stay to hell with it. <laughs> anyway, I, in order to put in the frequencies using a program, which is much easier, you have to find the COM port. And I always have the same thing with these. I have three of, uh, three of these radio, not radios like this. And I program them all using software. It's much easier to put in the information. Uh, but um, I always have trouble finding the COM port. So, by the way, wanted to say something about the radios. Oh, this one, you know, made in China, of course, only $30, and it was free shipping. And uh, in order to use it, well, to transmit with it, you need to be a licensed amateur radio operator. You need to take uh, the exam, get your license, and use it. Now, you could purchase it and put in frequencies and listen and uh, not transmit. But please do not transmit. If you're transmitting on an amateur radio band, the fine, I think, is $10,000. Plus, you could go to prison for it. So... But you could listen. But there is so much stuff now that has moved. It used to be you could listen to police calls and all that type of thing. Uh, now police departments have, because of terrorism and uh, enhanced security, they've, they're moving away. When I moved here to Fort Worth, okay, now you can pick up the, uh, well, not on this particular radio, you can pick up the Dallas Police Department frequencies. Fort Worth has moved, and theirs is encoded. You can't, and, it, and same with their fire department has moved. And most major police departments and fire departments have moved or are moving. So, uh, but it used to be just, in fact, I had, wasn't a transmitter. I mentioned this before, I'll mention it again because it's an interesting story. Um, 
I had a four channel crystal controlled Radio Shack scanner, just a scanner, would not transmit. And I carried it at the hospital that I worked at because I was working at that time at St. Joe Hospital in Kansas, St. Joseph Hospital in Kansas City, Missouri. And at that time, that was the number one crime area in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, 31st and Prospect uh, area or Linwood or, uh, yeah, Linwood and Prospect. Um, we had a staff of 10 security officers. I worked there almost three years or was it three and a half years? I think it was three and a half years. Out of the 10 security officers, we had uh, two shot. First was Dan, <coughs> shot and permanently disabled in the parking lot, in the Wabash parking lot. And then less than a year later, uh, John Gallegas uh, shot and killed him in the Wabash parking lot. He managed to shoot the <coughs> guy who shot him, they both shot at the same time. Um, but, okay, I had that scanner on, and I had, uh, I'm not sure what zone I was, anyway, I had the zone for, was it center zone? Well, anyway, I think it was 133, it was the district officer for that area. Anyway, I had that scanner going so I could hear calls and what was going on around me and uh, I was just getting ready to step walk across Wabash which was between the hospital and the parking lot and it was an interesting street one way very narrow and uh, I was just getting ready to step off and I heard I did not hear any siren or anything else but on the radio I heard 133 car chased uh, Let's see, Linwood and Wabash. And I stopped and banged the car that was being chased. Just, you know, I was on the curb. I could have put my hand out and touched the car. It went by high rate of speed. And the police car was right behind it. He hadn't had time. He got past me. He turned on the lights and the siren. Uh, so that scanner, if I hadn't, and I actually, you know, I, well, I, I stopped, what, couldn't, you know, bang. If I hadn't had that little Radio Shack scanner in my pocket, I would have been hit for sure. Maybe the first car would have hit me and knocked me up in the air, and the police car right behind him would have hit me, or maybe the first car would have hit me and knocked me and bounced me off the wall of the hospital, or I don't know, but saved my life. Um, now I've been 48 minutes. I think this is, I think I'm going to be able to monetize this because I haven't said anything political, have I? And I haven't cussed or swore, I don't think. I don't know. Anyway, I, we'll see what happens. Let me show you that, by the way. Give me an excuse to... What do I want to go to? I want to go to... Um, YouTube. And I want to go to... Video manager. Okay, I made a video September 5th. This is September 9th. The one I made on the 5th has got 49 views. I made a video on... Oh, okay. They did, um, they did have this marked. Uh, CNN has a story on black, hairy tongue. They had it marked not suitable. And I see now they have turned it on. Not that it matters, 49 viewers. It's not going to make me any money. But anyway, uh, that's what I was coming to show you. that. Um, So you can see the, the views that I get. I'm not even sure why I do. And you can see here, the green dollar sign means that an advertisement came. Here's a whole bunch that are not monetized. Now, a lot of these are not monetized because, now they, 
here's one uh, that they said was not suitable for advertisers. It's a review of a pill cutter. And I guess because of the word drug or a pill or something in the tags, they, and, and I'm, of course, I'm not requesting a review, to, you know. But uh, here's one really that nude swimming in the United States, and of course, they said that was not suitable for advertisers. So I guess I can't even talk about, I mean, it, it should be, that there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, but we have so many hang-ups here in the United States. That, so I guess I can't even talk about it, or this might be ruled not suitable <coughs> for advertising. Um, but do click on, because you can see, let's see, video manager, go back to dashboard. You can see that here in the last uh, 28 days, I have made $22.93 in revenue from YouTube advertising. Actually, a small amount of that would be if you pay for YouTube Red, which is about $10 a month or something like that. Uh, okay, YouTube premium revenue. I think that might be it. I made 90. If you pay for YouTube Red or something, which I do, you don't see any advertising, and the money is divided up among, in some formula, among uh, YouTube providers. But... Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I think my voice is going, and I need to uh, scrape my tongue again, although that's over with. I still scrape it, and I need to take the uh, prescription I got for the mouthwash, although my hairy black tongue is over with. I still think I need to take it as long as uh, my taste buds haven't returned. Uh, thank you very much for watching.